Abdul Karim Segawa, a student at the Islamic University of Uganda in Kampala, says the jacket is equipped with sensors that help the visually impaired wearer to detect obstacles from a distance. We have a combination of sensors. We have distance sensors, we have uh, vibrators, then we have uh, buzzers. So what uh, specifically the, the, the trick is in the distance sensors. What they do is uh, they are able to tell a, part, a distance, a particular distance of an object from the person. An object coming towards the person or a, a standstill object. So when, when the distance is detected that it is, the object is coming nearer to the, to, to the blind person, then the vibrators are triggered to, to, to vibrate on the body to indicate to this blind person that that side has an obstacle or has an, a moving object. Okay, as a, as a researcher, I was tasked to, to find a tool that can help the blind and deaf. So when, uh, when, I, sat, when I sat with, uh, with my colleagues, and then uh, I realized that uh, a lot of blind people have been neglected. Their safety has been neglected. Due, when they are in, on roads, when they are crossing roads, no one cares about them, we are in, in a crowd. The sensors on this jacket work properly. Whenever there is an object that gets close, it triggers the vibration to alert the visual impaired person that there is something or like an obstacle in front. But what happens if this person is in the middle of town where people move shoulder to shoulder? We, kept, we, we, we used uh, more than one sensor. We have distance sensors, but we wanted to include uh, laser sensors that can give far objects. And then there's the shorter distances by ultrasonic sensors, uh, this person can be able to know that I'm in a crowd. So if, if it is a crowd or if he's in Kampala, for instance, you can be able to know that people, most people are around me so we can reduce the distance. The jacket is fitted with General Pocket Radio Service or GPRS system. Uh, we, we looked at, I looked at cases where uh, this person might fall into trouble. For instance, the people, these people who want to sacrifice people or maybe he's lost, he has lost his way. So we, oh, I, I included the GPRS system where this person can press a button and then you get an alert on your phone. Then it also has a text saying that, please help. So that is when you can come in and help this person if maybe he has a problem. Since all these systems are battery powered and those would have been very heavy, they decided to use a solar charging system. Uh, I used a small, a small solar panel because uh, one thing I wanted was, realize that these blind people can actually move for distances. Some of them go to streets to beg and all that. So they can move distances away from home and they cannot get time to go back and charge if the equipment was rechargeable. So we, I put the solar panel that, so that whenever this person is moving during the day, the equipments are self-charging. They're charging the batteries and then the batteries can take him through the night. The garment is wired and has a board. Could the team have come up with a simpler system? First, when we were coming up with this solution, we wanted to first use our native technology, the things we have available in Uganda. So that is why all the boards are big, the wires are many. If we wanted to use something that is more exotic, uh, we would get lesser wires, but we wanted to use first the local technology, and then uh, we can upgrade later on. Sega and his colleagues are young innovators who would need money to see that their innovation can be put to good use. The question is, how far can they grow their idea, given the obstacles in their path? Sudil Biarhanga, NTV.